Hello, one and all. It is time once again to gather up. Yeah, charred. We're talking about episode 14. We've had a past couple of very intense episodes. Uh, so let's see what this one has for us. As we open up with uh, uh, Hotaro getting eaten by a dinosaur. Well, that was a good run, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm sad to say that Gachard's over now because, well, you can't get back from being eaten by a dinosaur. All right, that joke is over now. Let's continue. We let's go back. We, let's go back a few hours as uh, Hodor Rene basically. Hodor is decorating the family restaurant. Rene comes in. They give an explanation. Now we do a big party for everybody a week early. You know, Rene is like, "Hey, Hodor, can can we have a call? Can we talk?" You know, as they have a brief conversation, and Rene opens up and says, "Like, hey, yo, the the little." creepy girl the the leader of the group has been saying some weird shit to me and it's been getting on my mind and i just need someone to talk to i just need someone to to listen to what i'm going through and hotaro's like yo that's what i'm here for yeah it's almost as if i'm an embodiment of empathy and understanding and just being there for people you know almost as if like that's the whole point of the show uh they hear a big uh roar i believe no, wait a second. They don't hear a roar. They uh, they they see someone uh, come up, and they hear a roar. No, they do hear a roar. I'm going through this, the episode again, and I'm just going like, what was the order of operation? They hear a roar. They go and chase it down, and uh, it turns out it might be the T Rex Kimmy. They run into a girl, and she's going like, hey, I want to find my dad. I wanna I wanna get a picture of a dinosaur from my dad because he's been going through some shit, and I wanna support him. You know, it's like, oh, that's cute. That's adorable. They they, they they, go on a little merry jaunt to try and find it. They do find the dinosaur, and the dinosaur eats them. Rene is able to get the, the, the daughter uh, safely away. Uh, and we are in the the dinosaur empathy zone of the... <laughs> dinosaur empathy zone. The, the best attraction at Jurassic Park. We're basically... Uh, X-Rex is look can look into the memories of people and kind of just like, I want to understand you. Can I... Like, kind of invasive of privacy, but he ultimately he's like, oh, okay, cool, you're just trying to understand other people. He looks into the dad because the dad's in there. He, he got eight earlier. Uh, and he, he's basically going like, I want to support my... Uh, I want to be a good dad. I'm a writer. That's my job. And I want to write about dinosaurs, but the magazine I write for want me to do, like, Bigfoot and alien shit. And I was worried, and he was worried about losing his job, so he kowtowed, he bowed, and said, like, yeah, no, I'll, I'll write whatever you need me to write. And the daughter saw that, and he took that as the daughter being disappointed in him that he was giving up on what he wanted to do, giving up on his dreams. Not realizing that the daughter understands and sympathizes and empathizes as well. It's just communication. Communicate. That's the two themes of this show. And the thing in communication. That's that's what you need to take away from this. And the Hotoro gets the brilliant idea. Oh, he's trying to understand you. He's trying to understand us. Okay. Hey, X Rex, just go ahead, look in my mind so you can understand what I'm trying to be about. And like X Rex does and sees all the adventures they've gone through, uh, that Hotoro's gone through, on um, trying to help Kimmy's and the whole thing. And uh, goes like, oh shit, you're kind of dope. He goes back a little bit farther than we've seen as we see a child Hotoro, a little baby Hotoro, playing with Hopper 1. He knew Hopper 1. They were friends before this. That's why Hopper 1 was so immediately trusting of Hotoro. But Hotoro doesn't remember any of that. He's been mind whammied before. Oh no, that's interesting. But X Rex goes like, "All right, cool. Let me help you. You know, right? Let me let me spit you out of the dinosaur empathy zone." So they are going to go protect the daughter because uh, uh the, the the Abyssal Sisters are there and they're gonna be like little me's, right? Uh, so X Rex is able to they're able to use X-Rex, he's able to create a new form, and that's the end of the episode. But there is another thing that was going on as Spanner's being contacted by mysterious 
people. Whether that is the organization or not, we are unsure. But he is told the location and goes to fight the Abyssal Sisters. They use the Dread Driver and Spanner gets beat the fuck up. And we see Abyssal Sisters later on try and fight Hotoro. Boy, this was a pretty good episode. Um, it's a little bit of a downturn from the last one, but that's okay. You can't you can't just keep riding that fucking high, you know. Sometimes it's a roller coaster. You go up, you go down. You go up, you go down. But it's not down as like it's not down as in like of quality. It's down in like of hype. You know what I mean? It's like less things to get like oh shit about other than like the one scene of Baby Hotaro, right? But this is iterating on the themes of empathy more and more, especially with x Rex just trying to understand other people, you know? Just like, hey, what's what's uh, what's your deal? What, what's going on, right? And that mutual urge to understand of, like, once they understand x Rex's point of view, what it's trying to do, they're immediately like, oh, yeah, no, hey, dude, let's, let's talk a little bit, right? But there's also the aspect of, like, understanding and empathy with Hotaro and Rene of Rene just going like hey I just need someone to talk to I just need someone to 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 listen to my uh, listen to my problems and Hotaro's there to be that kind of person and yeah it's just like it's really good it's a really good episode we had some solid action I love the UFO spinning X-Rex looked a little ropey but hey that's not the end of the world and uh just what is Spanner up to what is Spanner all wrapped up in a lot of questions we're gonna get a lot of answers next time speaking of next time if you want to know about the next time i do a thing you can always follow me on social media and here on youtube oh, i'm clever at this aren't i uh like comment subscribe here on youtube you can also follow me on a variety of social media platforms such as blue sky twitter instagram tumblr mastodon links are all in the description uh, you can also uh, support me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. You can get a additional weekly video. Uh, right now I've been reviewing Ultraman Blazar and, uh, hopefully we'll have uh, something coming up after that as well. Uh, also you can get your name at the end of the video, name in your, uh, name of the video or a shout out at the end of the video, depending on how much, uh, how much you kick my way. So there's always that. And you know what's always at the end of my videos? Comments. Uh, first up from Slime Beast. Oh, okay. We're that kind of show now. Panic nightmare scene. The students laugh for they know not his fear. Okay, big, big bad evil vibes from the higher ups of the weird throne room. It's dark. They tell him not to uh, try and save Sabimaru. Big menacing cloaks. White man jump scare. Fuck you, I'm befriending a group of flying discs. Uh, these were my notes made at the time. Make of that what you will. I'll make comedy content out of this wahoo wacky pizza man i'm dante now <laughs> bang 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 i need to play devil may cry that's something i need to do yeah the alchemist organization is definitely up to something i don't think it's the organization i think it's not going to be the organization itself being evil but i think it is going to be an evil entity taking advantage of the alchemist organization if you get my what i'm saying it's not necessarily the organization is evil in itself because it is also kind of representing education in a way. Like, it is kind of the school board for the alchemy students, right? I think it's more... Okay, like, it, like uh, Forze. The school isn't evil. The principal was evil. I don't think the alchemist organization is evil. I think who's ever in control of it is evil, you know? Uh, and yeah, that's like 90% of Hotoro's wins are just like, haha, I win because I treat the obviously sentient creatures with respect and they like me. It's, it, it is almost Deus Ex Machina, but it is not. It is purely based off the character's actions. We're just going to ignore that. Barely based on the character's actions on how the Kimmies react to him, you know? And the Nightmare was solid. It was good. Pay good payoff. Good setup. Good foreshadowing. Good work on all uh, the emotional ties for the episode. Uh, next up from Fish Pop. The teacher speaking English felt weird. That monk staff the alchemist teacher made was nifty. A shame Kajiki conveniently knocked himself out. Didn't expect the saber to be a belt attachment. 
The goggles on his helmet blinking was kinda freaky, since both of the fighter sisters will you dread next time. Oh, and a T-Rex. Uh, I think you mean an <coughs> X-Rex. Yeah, the teacher speaking English and uh, last season's uh, John and Ben from Geats, I'm starting to get the feeling like the writers of Kamen Rider are kind of just seeing like the influx of um, an immigrant population in Japan and kind of going like, hey, maybe we should reflect that more in our storytelling, you know? And I think that's cool. There's a part of me that's like, yeah, no, that's dope. Uh, you know, J Japan is changing and we need to reflect that kind of stuff. Uh, I like the staff. I don't think that is a monk staff. I may be wrong, maybe totally wrong. Uh, but I do think that was used by samurai or like Edo period cops and whatnot to like push people out of the way. Though, don't, don't quote me on that. I didn't do any research. Uh, I have no notes and I have no uh, sources cited. Uh, uh, I, you know what I would love if Kajuki just gets immune to mind whammies. It's just like they try to mind whammy and goes like, what the fuck are you doing? What? What? You just like wiggled your fingers in front of me and nothing happened. Like what's going on? Oh shit, he can't be mind whammied anymore. Oh no. Uh, next up from Permanently Paper. The UFO X form is so goofy, and at first I hated it, but now I'm starting to like it, surprisingly. And as a sucker for some solid power scaling, I like the small detail that Valvarad actually has a reason to be able to hold his own against Dread now because Sabimaro's body is barely surviving. While other seasons, you would just have writers be able to beat villains previously unbeatable because plot demands it. Speaking of Valvarad, he is way too willing to kill a child. Overall, I rated an 8 out of 10. Uh, I love goofy forms. Like, uh, remember the blue like, a uh, race car form from Kamen Rider Drive that's just, like, a giant fucking shelf. I love that form. It's so goofy. It's so dumb. <laughs> it's so dumb. But I love it. And UFO gives similar vibes, but he also gives a little bit, like, Cosmos uh, from Transformers, if you know that. If you know that guy. Uh, but he also gives, like, like tech character from the early 2000s where, like, remember the goopy dude from, like, Ben 10? Like, that kind of vibe. Or, like, Shriek from Batman Beyond. It's cool. Uh, I kind of love how Battle Rad just can't keep up. Everything is getting so powerful and he's just like, I have... Because he's so dead fast and, like, not wanting to empathize with the creatures, right? So, because of that, he's not able to keep up. Like, because... The creatures are only able to give so much power by, like, force. If you befriend them, they, they're they willing to give all the power, you know? And Valvara's just like, why can't I keep up? And it's because you can't befriend the, the, the... You can't befriend the PNGs. Like, you can befriend this PNG. Hello. <laughs> this is a joke. Uh, and hey, that, that, that man knows that's not a child. That's not a child. That's, that's a grown-ass woman looking like a child. And not in the creepy, weird anime way, but just more in like the, you're being, you're being creepy, you're, it's being creepy, but not in that way, but in the other creepy way, you know? It's meant to be disarming. Uh, and next up from Esconde, I wish the new teacher didn't get axed. He seemed like a really swell guy, didn't even penalize his students who was sleeping in class. I know the Alchemy Association is heavily painted as the bad guys, but man, Professor Minato did not deserve that kind of response for his urgent appeal. And he was still following protocol. They didn't receive any reports recording his, or regarding his claims that it's impossible to save a student, that it's more important to capture the Kimmings. Good grief, these guys are a real piece of work. I didn't expect you to just waltz, uh, waltz in here in broad daylight, Professor Minato. Why do you care? You're just gonna erase all their memories anyway. Uh, Clotho. Man, I love that exchange. Gotta admit, Clotho kinda has a point. I always enjoy seeing Professor Minato in action, and that rod thing he transmuted was neat. Hope that if he becomes a writer down the line, he uses a similar weapon. It's a little sad that Spanner didn't realize the reason Dread wasn't fighting as fierce as before is Sabimaro was probably trying to hold back. Either that or Spanner is just that jaded. Kajiki continuing to be a great guy. Really hope he becomes a writer or an honorary alchemist. Or at least they stop trying to wipe his memories. I am I think the teacher's still alive because that was a really goofy way to get rid of him. Uh, and I can see him coming back just a little hurt, a little worse for wear. Or he was just a one-off extra, and they just decided to hire a white guy. 
who knows uh but yeah the way the hires up act is it's just like tradition and bureaucracy superseding everything it's just like we yeah no do the job we don't care about the the human cost i mean they don't care about the chemi cost why should they care about the human cost right and they are the, the fact that they're addressing the mind wipes is interesting and i think it's interesting just to see if like yeah that is kind of fucked up that you're just manipulating other people's memories and that's always been a thing of like memories is what makes people people right and I do find it interesting, we're talking about, like, the, the stiffness and the bureaucracy of the Alchemist Association. All the, the truly evil characters we've seen so far have all been women, right? The, the, the Abyssal Sisters and the Spy have all been women, and I wonder if that's, like, a reference to how women may be held back in organizations like this, or they may be belittled, or not respected in a certain way and they're trying to gain that respect and i'm not saying like girl power let's go but i'm just saying like maybe they are trying to say something with that you know uh a, a kid who doesn't get the warmth of the village will burn it down right uh and yeah no i think i think spanner's just like jaded to the letter of the law it's just like yeah no Kimmies are Kimmies are bullshit. They're just tools, and he just does what he's told, right? And I think that's gonna be, I think, doing what he's told and learning to appreciate other people. Like I think that's gonna be like his big character arc. And like I said before, I Kajiki just keep mind whamming him until he can't like it doesn't affect him anymore. I think that would be hilarious. But that is it for this gather up. <clears throat> Good chart, Jesus. I, I I wasn't holding that in. That just came out of nowhere. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope to see you around. Also, hey, I didn't tell you about my Twitch channel. So, so go follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash Boingo Writer. I stream uh, at least once a week. Yeah! Uh, but till next time, like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment down below. I really love hearing what you guys think. And uh, as we develop thoughts, ideas on the themes and the, the theories of the shows. And uh, till next time. Thank you all my Patreon supporters, but a big thank you to Scott Firestein, one of the baddest dudes.